Good morning. Wonderful to have all of you who are with us uh, in person here for worship, as long as with those who are watching via our live stream. My name is Jeremy Jacoby, senior pastor here at Summit of Peace. We'll be sharing a message today uh, from God's Word in our series, Now What?, where we um, consider where it is that God's uh, leading us in 2021. Pastor PJ is with us here this morning to lead us in worship, and so we pray it'll be a blessing to you. Just a couple of reminders of things going on. Drive through communion today at 9.15 to 10 a.m., so join us for that uh, if you so desire. For those who are here in person, you can uh, drop off offering or your visitor slips in the blue basket on the way out. And of course, you can also, just like people who are watching online, support our ministry uh, by giving online as well. Uh, reminder that you can submit your prayer requests in the comments section of the feed uh, up through the time of the offering. Those will be communicated to us, and we'll use those in our prayers today. And then uh, verbal prayers will be taken from those who are here with us in person. And if you are watching one of our live streams, we would love it if you would share with your family and friends so that they might be blessed as well. I think that's it for our announcements. Why don't we stand, prepare our hearts with our first hymn. as always remembering the name in which we were baptized into in the name of the father the son the holy spirit amen blessed are those whose way is blameless who walk in the law of the lord blessed are those who keep his testimonies who seek him with their whole heart who also do no wrong but walk in his ways you have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rule. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Let's go to our patient, loving Heavenly Father, confident of his forgiveness. For Jesus' sake. Heavenly Father, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have failed to exhibit patience, the fruit of your Holy Spirit, in our thinking, speaking, and acting. We have not loved you completely or our neighbors as ourselves. We have let our momentary hurts and anger displace the forbearance you have shown us. We have not walked humbly before our God. Our Lord Jesus revealed his person and ministry through his words and actions. In your great mercy, forgive, renew, and lead us 
so that we may be revealed as his faith-filled followers to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As I call an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. pray. Father in heaven, throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus revealed his identity and mission through words and deeds. Grant that your Holy Spirit will strengthen us so that we may be revealed as his faith-filled followers as we demonstrate the Spirit's fruit of patience as we listen to our friends and await your answers to prayer. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. First reading from the day comes from Micah chapter 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Our epistle today comes from Philippians chapter 1, starting with verse 18. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me... To live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. 
I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you have, may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or an absent, am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Continue with our children's message. Tasha, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in, like, minutes. Okay. How about this muffin I made for you? I love you. Whatever. Bye, Tasha. I'm leaving for work. Dang, wait. It's freezing outside. Here's your jacket. Oh. Have a good day. Whatever. Tasha, I feel sick. What if I caught the Rona? Oh. You're okay. You just need some rest. Here, how about I make you some soup? Mm-hmm. I love you. Whatever. All of the things that Tasha did were to show me that she loved me. But my response was really mean. Every time she said, I love you, all I did was say, whatever, and then ignore her. That's not the way that we should treat each other. And it's pretty obvious how mean that is to treat somebody else like that. But we do this to God all the time. He gives us everything. From the food on the table, to our wonderful homes, to our families and our friends and the schools that we go to, and everything that we have is provided by God. Everything we have is a gift that he gives us because he loves us. And if we are to truly live the faith as if we believe that everything we have is a gift from God, we should start acting like it. All too often, we're given a gift or an answer to one of our prayers, and then we just take it and move on, almost as if God is saying, I love you, and we go, whatever. And that's not the right way to treat him. We need to remember that he is the most important person in our lives, and He is providing everything that we need. So when we receive a blessing from God and He says, I love you, don't say, whatever. Say, thank you, God. I love you too. Remember, we can best live the faith by living like Jesus for everybody else. He was the perfect example, and He prayed and thanked God every day. So the more we're like Jesus, the more we'll be living the faith and growing closer to Him. Amen. Let's rise for our Gospel reading. Holy Gospel today comes from Mark chapter 12, starting with verse 28. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, Jesus, uh, they asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. 
You have truly said that he is one and there is no, no other besides him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one neighbors as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Can you be seated? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We'll be looking at all of our readings today, but in particular from Mark chapter 12, where Jesus says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So as I mentioned in our opening, we're uh, finishing up a sermon series called Now What? Where we are uh, looking at the challenges that the church faced over 2020 and what it might look like uh, in 2021. The places that God is calling us, the places he's leading us, and, and just really what it would be to fulfill our mission here at Sound of Peace, which is that we grow in faith, share the faith, and live the faith. 
And a couple weeks ago, we looked at uh, the challenges around growing in the faith, especially when we look at um, particularly how that's lived out uh, in the way that we gather together uh, for worship. Um, in fact, if you recall, here's our definitions for each of these. For grow, that is uh, that we grow in our knowledge of trust and commitment to the Lord through worship, Bible study, and giving. And of course, um, those uh, became a little bit more challenging during COVID, particularly at least gathering in the ways and worship in the ways that we were used to. Uh, we talked about sharing the faith last week, uh, sharing the faith of the people in, in our lives, especially encouraging supporting the family of faith through life groups. Uh, and last week, we highlighted in particular uh, how important it is that we uh, be in Christian community together. And again, how this was a challenge during uh, the past year and, and maybe even moving forward a little bit, but also how, how necessary it is and, uh, and the efforts that we must place to continue to encourage and gather together, uh, even if it's virtually for a little while, uh, but also in person as we are able as well. <clears throat> and today we take up the topic of living the faith. Uh, we talk about this in this way. We say we live out our faith in ways that visibly, physically share the love and mercy of Christ with our family, friends, community, and world through our vocation, that's the callings God has given us, service and outreach. And so, um, I don't know if you've thought about it, but uh, as I was putting this together and thinking about this uh, series, it dawned upon me that perhaps, um, in some ways, the living of the faith became one of our more vital and perhaps least disrupted ways uh, that we were able to continue our mission uh, during the time of COVID. Because if anything, the, the need for us to, to reach out into our community to support and care for not only one another, uh, but the people around us uh, grew exponentially. Uh, and so when we, um, when we talk about how we live out the faith, we talk about it how we live uh, in service here at our church, right, through our music, worship, fellowship, and teaching, but also through our outreach. Things like our community gardens, Cambodia Mission, Thanksgiving Basket, Angel Trees, our donation bins, all the ways that, that we serve in the community. And, um, and some of those uh, we got to add to because of specific things that were going on uh, in the, our communities around us. But the interesting thing is that we, I believe, as sinful, broken people still kind of um, can get caught up in this, um, this tension that we are to have as God's people. Um, now, that's not to say, um, well, let me put it this way. We, we show that we have a great heritage when we struggle with this tension because God's people have always struggled with this tension. Um, we, we look at the history, if you look at the history of God's people, the history of, of uh, the nation of Israel, the history of his church, they, they have this thing where they kind of swing back and forth like a pendulum. They swing from times where they are uh, totally, shall we say, presumptive of God's grace. They live as if there's no covenant, and, and because they have his forgiveness, they can do whatever it is they want. And then they swing to the other side, usually after God has punished them for um, their disobedience, swing to the other side where they believe that their entire relationship is based upon their behavior, right? Are we doing the things God wants us to do? Are we, we pleasing him? And uh, that's actually kind of the context for the gospel lesson today, but, but I wanted to show you how even this, is, this has been part of... Um, God, people struggle going back. We think of our text from Micah, the last verse there. It says, what has he told you, O man? What is good? What does the Lord require of you? And to Micah, it's pretty simple. Do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Can you imagine if that was like a, a checklist that you had every morning when you woke up? What should I do today? Love justice, or do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with with God. It was kind of interesting. It might, might change uh, the way that we, we think and act and um, respond to the, the, the people with which we come in contact. And, and I mentioned that God's people have, have wrestled with this kind of pendulum um, throughout history. And uh, as I was thinking about this message, I, was, I, I almost was going to say that today I think the church is still made up of people who are on both sides of that pendulum. But I actually think that's not true. What would be more accurate is to say at certain times in our life, we are all one side or the other of the pendulum. We've been in both places, right? There's been times where we are presumptive of God's grace. We abuse it. We think, well, I'll start, you know, being nicer tomorrow. Uh, I'll give up this behavior later on. 
uh, somewhere down the road, um, this will change. But for right now, I'm just going to keep, keep living this way. And there's at other times when, when we look at uh, our behavior and we think to ourselves, I'm a pretty, pretty good dude. I was on I-25 today and I didn't run anybody off the road. That's actually quite difficult. Um, I didn't lie. I didn't cheat. Right? In fact, I was on the news and I was watching the way these people behave that uh, doesn't make any sense to me. And I, you know, I, I'm glad that I'm a better person than, than they are. Right? And, and so the truth is that, that both sides of this pendulum are actually easy for us to fall into. Which is why the, the message of the gospel is so important. Think about what Jesus says. The context is interesting. Jesus is actually uh, questioned. So this, this story actually appears in uh, a couple of different places in the gospels. And Mark gives us a little bit more uh, context to it. Um, the way that Mark tells the story, it seems less confrontational than uh, the way Matthew presents it. And of course, could be that Jesus was questioned on more than one occasion as well. Uh, but, but there's this uh, gentleman who comes to Jesus and he wants to know what he thinks is, is the most important rule. Now, my favorite thing about Jesus' answer is this. Uh, he's asked, what's the number one most important rule? And he says, the two most important rules are this. And in so doing, I'd suggest to you that he's revealing the danger of the pendulum, right? Picking the one and forsaking the other. And so he answers them, he says, the most important is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. This is actually, if you want to think about it, this was the creed of the Old Testament. I don't know if you know that. In fact, if you went through confirmation and had to learn like the Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, you might think to yourself, I wish I was, had grown up a you know, Jewish boy or girl because the creed, look how short that is. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. But this was the confession of Israel that lived uh, amongst a group of people who were uh, believed in multiple gods, right? And, and here you had the Israelites who were monotheists. And so the heart of who they were came from this identity, knowing that their God was the God, the one God. And then it led them to the commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater commandment than these. And so from the very beginning, the, the, the wrestling with this question, with this sort of pendulum with which Christians live, Jesus rejects and says, no, it has to be, it has to be both. And, and I can't tell you how important this, this teachings of Jesus is, this revelation, really, of what he's trying to bring to his people, because if you stop and think about it, what better describes Jesus' entire ministry? Loving God? See, if I put it to you as an either-or, which did Jesus do better? Love his heavenly Father or love his neighbor? Right? You can't, it's not an either-or, it is a both-and. And, and in fact, the ultimate demonstration of this, of course, is that he is coming to rescue and to redeem, to, to fulfill and to do what we have not done. The calling of God's people has always been the same. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbors yourself, and we fail in both of those. And so first and foremost, Jesus steps into the world and he does what we are unable to do. He literally fulfills the righteousness that we are supposed to have. He does himself through his ministry. He is totally obedient to God. He is in perfect communion with him. The times that he is uh, prayerful, thankful to what God has, has done. But at the same time, he is living out the mission that his father has given him, which is to love the world. And that ultimately, of course, is demonstrated in his death and his resurrection. See, it's, it's, it's this truth, as strange as it might sound, the very fact that, that our Savior dies and rises gives us a completely different context. I mean, the, the challenge for the Old Testament people, uh, they still had, of course, God's grace, right? He had acted graciously in their lives. He had delivered them from the nation of Israel. In fact, the times that he had delivered them and preserved them throughout the Old Testament are innumerable. But, but their hope, their true hope was looking forward to the Messiah who would be the true Israel, 
the one who would fulfill all things. And now we, living as New Testament people, have live in this as an accomplished fact. And to the point where it should change how we think about this entirely. Um, Paul has this interesting phrase in Philippians, don't you think? For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's interesting. I don't know if anyone has ever, uh, has ever felt this way, where you thought, you know, I'm ready to be with Jesus, right? Maybe, maybe, you're, just, maybe you're just tired. Uh, maybe, maybe you just feel like the world is, is too much, right? I'm pretty sure that come a week from today, starting at about 420, the world is going to see dark and bleak to me for the next three or four hours, right? No matter what happens, it's going to be a terrible, terrible outcome, right? The best that we could hope for is a meteor that would just… Str- no, we don't want that to happen either, I guess. Um, but, but we live in these moments, I, um, not to be too personal with you, but if you are part of our prayer chain, you know that um, my last living grandmother went to be with Jesus on Friday. And uh, as a family, um, she, she was 98, would have been 99 in April, and as a family, we, we kind of struggled with being too sad. And what I mean by that is uh, she had severe dementia, Grandpa had passed away almost 10 years ago, and, and it was actually kind of hard for us to be really, really sad about it, to be honest. What we were m- most sad about is that we couldn't actually gather together. I couldn't go hang out with my, my mom, who was grieving. My cousins couldn't hang out with their father, uh, who was grieving. But, but the, 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 the mourning, the true mourning and sadness that, that would come to the world is different for us because we know it's not the end. For grandma to die was actually gain. But, but while Jesus says no to that, when he says we're still to live, then our living is to live as Christ. And um, it's been interesting, I, uh, over the past year, as, as, um, as we struggled as a nation, as we struggled as a church, as we struggled as individuals with, um, with what's taking place with COVID, the, the mandates that are in place, the things that our authorities are tr- ask us to, uh, to do, there's, there's been lots and lots of, of pastors preaching, lots of people writing on it. Um, but to me, for all the verses that are quoted about our, uh, that could be reference to our civil liberty or obeying the governments, the ones that we, to be honest, haven't heard enough are how in this situation do we love God and do we love our neighbor? Because the truth of the matter is, as Americans, we can sometimes get caught up into this idea that our freedom is the most important thing. And it certainly is a very, very important thing. Don't misunderstand me. Especially, the, particularly the, the freedom to worship God, right? Uh, to gather and, and do as our conscience dictates. But, but the New Testament, even going here to, to what Paul is talking about, says time and time again, reminds us that what Christians do is they set aside their rights if it helps and serves their neighbor. If it helps them if it helps protect them, if it encourages them, if it, if it lifts them up. And one of the things that, that I've loved as, as your pastor here at Summit of Peace is, is how well I feel like, feel like we've done that. I think about what Paul says. He says, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Right? Your living of the faith, may it be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So whether that I come to see you or absent, isn't this, it almost sounds a little bit like a father warning, isn't it? Now, when I come home, but, but he says, whether I'm with you or absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in the Spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. That, that no matter what it is that the Philippians are facing, no matter what the early church is facing, no matter what we are facing, the call of the gospel is that we stand side by side for the sake of it. To, to share it with those who are around us. To, to be Christ in the world. Um, and I was thinking about this, this kind of 
uh, I don't know, this might seem a little heavy-handed, but I came across this on uh, Facebook a little while ago, and I thought it was kind of cool. This year, I want to be more like Jesus. Does that sound like a good list? Well, here's what that person wrote down. Hang out with sinners, upset religious people, tell stories that make people think, choose unpopular friends, be kind, loving, and merciful, and maybe the best of all, take naps on boats. So again, this is, uh, like I said, it could be a little heavy-handed. It's, it's in some ways, it's reducing it and simplifying it where it's not, but, but I do think it's, it's worthwhile to let us look out and, and to be challenged. What's the number one criticism from the religious people of Jesus? He hung out with sinners. And, and think how much he challenged them. Because in hanging out with sinners, he was reminding them, we don't live and treat God as if he's just a free pass for everything, right? His grace is so great that we want to certainly embrace it, but we also want to see it change us. And to the religious people who are saying, hey, look at my life. Look how, how good and perfect it is, Jesus was reminding them, hey, in, G- in God's scorecard, there's pass or fail, and you need 100% to pass, and even 99% is fail. And it was that challenge to both groups of people, right, that I believe was so important and powerful in Jesus' ministry. And, and it should be part of ours as well, because the truth of the matter is it's not easy. Uh, I've often joked that um, in some ways, uh, being a Lutheran, having our kind of understanding of this duality actually makes it more difficult to be a Christian. It's quite a, kind of like parenting. Any, got any parents here? I don't know if you've ever thought about this. But you know the two easiest ways to parent are? Easy way number one is you say yes to everything. You know what the other easy way is? Say no to everything. Guess what's really hard? to sometimes say yes, to sometimes say no. And and as we live in in this life, in this messy society, we run into the same thing. It'd be really easy for us to just be like, well, whatever, I don't want to, I don't want to be running in the wind, right? I don't want to have to face down the world and all of its crazy things that it thinks I'll just tuck my head and just do what I want. But the other is to constantly sit in judgment of people, right? To, to condemn and cast aspersions and, and fail to see where we have also failed as well. Uh, but as I said before, I, I, I'm super proud to be pastor here at Summit of Peace because I, I think it's just astounding to me that even in the midst of, of this challenging year, our living of the faith was so, so, was so great. Every year we share this uh, kind of information for, um, for our living the faith and just the various ways that we've lived it out in our communities around us. And this doesn't even include what was basically a, a record-setting year for us in our uh, fundraising for, to support, for example, uh, our mission work in Cambodia. Uh, or the thing that we have been doing uh, this past year, which includes today, uh, where we give uh, a percentage of our offerings to support uh, a particular local ministry. Even in the midst of, uh, of a time that was trying for us, even in the midst of a time when we couldn't gather and grow in the way we wanted, in a time when we couldn't be together and support one another sharing the faith, God's Spirit still was with us and, and led us to live it out. And so my prayer for us going forward is that, that we continue with it, that we ne- recognize the times and places that, that, that we are presumptive of God's grace. There are times that we recognize and confess the times we're legalistic, but in all of it, with, with His forgiveness and His Spirit leading us, we live it out once again. So if you haven't had an opportunity uh, to this point during, um, during January, I encourage you to do it today to fill out your ATMs, your uh, abilities, times, money, commitment form. This helps us plan our ministry and look for the ways in particular we live out and share our faith. Uh, you can find those printed ones on the table in the back or hopefully you got them mailed to you as well uh, through our email. <clears throat> Contact us in the office if you still need them. The, the challenge of 2020 cannot be overstated. But I hope over the last three weeks you've seen what I've seen. 
which is that we still had a God who is mighty and in control. And despite the challenges of this, he was generous to his church. He was gracious to his people. And he never stopped seeing them through it. And in so doing, never stopped loving the world. We grow in faith. We share the faith. We live the faith. Amen. I want to share with you this week's generosity moment. Uh, we got a number of ladies who volunteer in our office that help us out with uh, a lot of things going on. So we want to thank Liz Grunwald, Grunland, Kelly Wolf, Becky Gann, Susie Beaker, Kathy Haig, all who volunteer in the church office. Uh, a lot of hours to keep up with all of our administrative stuff, things like uh, our... Um, our um, church management software, doing the prayer chain, all those sorts of things. So we give thanks for them, sharing uh, generously of their time. As God is generous in our lives, so we're generous in the lives of others. We worship Him with our offering.
we have any prayers we'd like to include for the from the congregation today? Prayers for Emily Witt and her family for her wedding today. Oh yeah, Emily. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for being our Savior and our Lord, Lord, for doing what we are unable to do and in living a life of love to God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Lord, we pray that we would not take your grace for granted, but rather seek to truly do just that, to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbors as we would want to be loved. We pray, Lord, that we wouldn't do it in order to earn your favor, but rather as a response to the great grace that you have given to us. Not a grace that allows us to live in the way we want, but, Lord, a grace that empowers and challenge us, challenges us to become more like you. We pray, Lord Jesus, for our church, and especially during this time of the pandemic, that our love for you and for other people would shine out more brightly, that we would take advantage of those opportunities that you have placed in our lives to make your love known. Pray for our church family, including the Bayans family, the Beardsley family, the Beck family, the Beaker family, Christ our Redeemer, Lutheran, and Bennett, uh, precious child in the ministry, we seek to touch people's lives. Lord, we uh, lift up to you all those who are sick and suffering. We pray, Lord, for Deb's neighbor's cousin's family who uh, lost Richard to COVID, the family not allowed to be with him or even talk to him. And Lord, you know how much more difficult it is in this time. We pray for understanding and peace for the family. We pray for Lucy, uh, the family and friends of Lucy, uh, whose husband of 47 years passed away on Tuesday. Lord, we pray for also Cindy and uh, Janet. We pray for people to be able to get the vaccine that, that would be successful and effective. Pray for Pastor Robert as he's on another round of chemo. We pray for uh, friends and family of Olivia Pearson as they mourn her loss and also celebrate that she is now at peace with you. We pray for a blessing, Lord, of, for Emily and her upcoming wedding, that you would grant her a joyous celebration and a uh, motivation to build her life and her family on her relationship with you. Any other prayers, Lord, we bring before you on the silence of our hearts. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can approach your throne of grace with all confidence since your love does cover our sins. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
You may be seated once again. And again, wonderful to have everyone with us in worship. We pray it was a joy and a blessing to you, whether you were here watching our live stream. Just some things to remind you of in the life of our congregation. Do encourage you to fill out those ATMs if you can, uh, either the paper ones we have here in person, or you can um, uh, ask to be sent them. Or, um, but they've uh, come out in a number of emails over the last few weeks, so uh, check your inbox for that. Uh, today, we also have the Summit of Summit. Uh, we'll be gathering here in person about 11.45. Uh, it'll take a little bit for us to get up and going after the 10.30 service ends. So if you're going to watch the live stream, I'd actually expect it to be up more like 11.50 or something like that. But it'll be up and going, and you'll have an opportunity um, to join us for that. That's where I share kind of um, uh, what has <clears throat> taken place over the previous year, where I believe God is leading us. I know uh, there's, always, there's lots of questions that people have, like, uh, you know, how did we do over COVID and all that kind of stuff? And so we'll be answering those questions along with uh, where I see God leading us in the future. Um, we're continuing with our diaper drive. That's uh, a way to support uh, families in need. This is um, something that we uh, started here a little bit ago. That continues through February 10th. You can drop them off in the church entryway or um, during office hours or on Sunday. Uh, we, are continue we are going to have our uh, Ash Wednesday and Lenten services in person. Um, last uh, winter spring, we ended up doing those um, virtually because of COVID and then the same with our Advent services, but it looks like things are continuing well enough now that we'll be able to do those in person. Um, so save the dates for those. Um, also want to remind you though that uh, we won't be doing meals yet. We're still not uh, to the place where we can do meal service. However, check this out. Crew will bring you a Lenten meal on February 21st or on March 7th. You can sign up for that um, and uh, they'll, they'll actually bring you a meal. They're like Grubhub or um, Uber Eats or something like that, right? And so you can have, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, oh, my favorite part of Lent is not PJ preaching, it's the soup. <laughs> well, you can still get a meal delivered, so sign up for that. Uh, a couple other cool things that we're doing, we're doing some family Lent bags. We did this in, in, August, or in Advent, and we're also doing it for Lent. It goes along with our sermon series for um, the Wednesdays in uh, Lent and also Holy Week, which are the seven last words of Jesus. Uh, it's uh, activities, family activities you can do with um, friends, coworkers, pets, anyone. So you can pick those up if you're here in person or if you go through the drive through or arrange to do it here in the church office as well. Also want to let you know that we are doing... Uh, Cross training, that's our um, Christian education for pre-K through fourth grade. That's going to be taking place on Wednesday the 17th. That's going to be in person. Uh, you can RSVP online for that as well. Uh, also want to just make sure you always check out uh, your email. Stay up to date with going on through our um, website, also our various social media. Contact us in the office if you have any needs. And as always, if you uh, like the digital content we create, please share it with your family and friends. I believe that's it. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.